Hello and welcome to this video tutorial. Today we're looking at turning a data set in Excel into a histogram and to select our own bins or our own ranges for that particular histogram. That's pretty important. I have a set of data here. So I've got delivery times for a set of 50 items that were shipped and we're just going to look at those with a histogram. So the first thing I'm going to do is go and select my data so I don't have to do that later on, simple to do. I'm going to insert and over here what I want to do is to choose this insert statistic chart. It's got a little histogram on it. This is the one we need because this has got the tools that we need to use. I'm going to click on it and we're going to choose the histogram. So now we have a histogram for our data, but when you first look at it, it's not going to really be what you want, but don't worry about that because it's really, really easy to set it to the way you want it to look. So you can see here that what Excel has done is it's actually bin these or put them into little groups itself, but it hasn't chosen whole days. This is 1 to 3.2, 3.2 to 5.4, etc. Not really very helpful. So it's this axis that we want to change. So I'm just clicking on the axis and I'm going to right click here and choose format axis. It can be a bit tricky if you don't realize that it's actually the axis that you're changing. So just be aware of that because otherwise you won't get this bins option. So in these axis options here is a set of bin settings and at the moment we've got them automatic and that's what's causing these really weird shaped bins. So I'm going to click on here and you can see that our bins currently are 2.2. Well I want them to be a whole number and I'm thinking two is a good starting point. So I'm just going to tap on two and now we've got bins of between one days and three days, three and five, five and seven, etc. If you want your bins to be smaller, then you can just make them smaller. So here I have bins that are just one. So this is the number of one days, this is the number of two days, three days, etc. Now, if you wanted to get rid of these bins here, so you can see that we've got sort of small numbers over eight days, well, we can do that with what's called an overflow bin. So I'm just gonna click on here on overflow bin. So what we want to say is anything that is more than eight days, so nine, 10, 11, is going to be grouped together. So I'm going to make that eight. And now you'll see that greater than eight has got three in it. It's got 9, 10 and 11. Any number of days that is greater than 8 is going to be in this overflow bin. So now that we've got our chart, we can do things like make these bars further apart. So I'm just clicking on the bars here. Let's just go and do that again. And I'm here into series options. I'm going to increase the gap width. So there's a bit more breathing space between the bars if you want to. And obviously you'd replace this title with your own chart title. Just want to have another look at a set of data. In this case, this is some salary data because we're going to need to do some bin work here as well. So I've got employees in a very small company, 36 people, and these are their salaries. So I'm again going to create a histogram, select over all of my data, go to insert, go back into histogram, select the histogram. Here we've got a really big bin problem because the top people in the organization earn so, or the top person earns so much money that they're throwing all our calculations out. So what we're going to do here is again go and sort out our bin. So let's just right click on our axis. To start off with, I'm going to make my bin width about $20,000. I think that's going to be a good starting point. Except that <laughs> it looks pretty awful. So let's just go and sort it out from here. What I want is an overflow bin to deal with this and this. So I want to bundle these two people into a bin by themselves so that this data gets stretched out a whole lot further. So what I'm looking for in my data is sort of the two outliers, which is this 500,000 and 1.8 million. So I'm going to do an overflow bin, which is everybody over about $120,000 because they're the next salaries that are appearing in here. So let's just test this with 120,000. That's much better. Now we can see our data a whole lot more clearly. And at this point, we may want to change our bin widths down. So we could do a bin width of 10,000. And you may want to play with your bin widths to show your data in the best possible way because it won't always be apparent until you get a histogram on the screen exactly which is the best way to display your data. So here, 
clicking on my axis, right click on format axis and I do have access then to all my bins here and I could make an underflow bin if I wanted say everybody under $50,000 to be grouped together into a bin but this one here is going to save us from having a histogram that just looks awful. So let's go now and just separate things out a little bit so we can see things a bit more clearly. And of course we'd be changing our chart title. But this ability to create a histogram automatically from your data and then play around with your bin sizes and also create some overflow and even underflow bins will allow you to sort of group your data into a meaningful histogram that will then allow you to do the analysis that you want to do. If you like carefully researched content like this, clearly presented in a step-by-step -step format so that you can get great results every time, then you'll love my other YouTube videos. So give this video a thumbs up and click to subscribe to the channel. And on the screen now, you'll see a video that I've handpicked for you to watch next.